It's 80 minutes after the initial landslide. And to the east, the wave, still up to 60 meters high, is minutes from its first major cities. Casablanca in Morocco, and its capital, Rabat. A combined population of six million. It's estimated that two thirds of them will not survive the wave's impact. Just 30 minutes after Casablanca, the wave reaches Europe. It is still the height of a two-story house. The coastal capital of Lisbon is devastated. After hitting Lisbon, the emergency services have just three hours before the wave strikes Britain. The Environment Agency issues flood warnings to the south coast. Fire, ambulance and rescue units are put on standby. Police clear the streets of southern coastal towns evacuating schools and vulnerable communities. Back in Whitehall, the government has to work out what to say and how to deal with increasing public panic as awareness of the scale of unfolding events spreads. A giant tsunami is spreading throughout the Atlantic Basin. Waves of up to 40 meters high have already devastated the coasts of Portugal, North Africa and Spain. Scientists estimate that the wave is traveling at approximately 500 miles per hour and is expected to be across the Atlantic. Just three hours after the first UK warnings, a wave up to 25 meters high makes its first landfall in Britain. We can get some idea of the impact of a seven to 10 meter wave on the UK south coast by looking at what happened in the Indian Ocean in 2004 in places like Sri Lanka and Thailand. The level of destruction was immense and the death toll was in the tens of thousands. You could say that the population on the south coast of the UK is probably quite a bit higher. So that sort of wave would be immensely destructive in the UK. From Cornwall, the wave surges through into the Irish Sea and through the English Channel, engulfing much of Britain's south coast. The aspect that makes a tsunami so devastating is its wavelength and how long it is. A storm wave might be 10, 20, 30 metres long, 40 metres long, 50 metres long. In the case of a tsunami, we have a wave that's two or three hundred kilometers long. Unlike a storm wave, a tsunami just keeps on coming, mile after mile of it. Seawater floods our southern cities and penetrates low-lying farmland for miles inland. It not only runs up the coastline and inundates the land, but it continues to flow inland as if it's a river flowing over the land and scouring out, removing things in its path. So it's the inundation, it's the wavelength um, that actually makes these events so dangerous. Models differ on what the wave might do to our southern cities as it works its way east. Towns such as Brighton would probably survive, but would suffer serious disruption. In our scenario, 
London, our capital, tucked in from the North Sea, is safely sheltered. Britain, it seems, will survive the worst calamities seen elsewhere. <laughs> 